everyone, and welcome back to another episode of El Koki Otaku. Today, we have a very special guest with us. Um, she, or we better know her as Izuki uh, uh, Sumeragi in Kakegurui. We also know her as Fapta in Made in Abyss and as Vine in Is It Wrong to Pick Up Girls in a Dungeon? So please give it up for Kat. Thomas, I <laughs> know it's not wrong. <laughs> I did it. It's not wrong. <laughs> Kat, God. thank you so much for being with us today. Of course, thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. L- let's be honest. How, how many people that surround you, or family, or friends, they know about how many characters do you perform in anime series, such as? <laughs> important at this level that Kara mentioned that's a that's a really good question um I a few of like my cousins and things who are who are a little bit on the younger side know and they're like oh my gosh yeah no I've heard of that one oh interesting <laughs> um and then my 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 older family are like mm, and she does she does cartoons like <laughs> <laughs> oh my god <laughs> the question is when they hear you do they do they know it's you Or do you have to tell them? I usually have to tell them because sometimes I'll, I'll show them clips and I'll be like, and my voice will be speaking and they'll be like, which one are you? <laughs> um, so it usually takes them a second and then they'll be like, oh. Um, so it's funny because sometimes people are like right away and sometimes they're like, which, what am I listening to? <laughs> um, which it's you- a mix. Which in many times, many voice actors ha- has expressed with us, especially the Spanish voice actor, that when that mm-hmm. happened, they feel that they succeed as a voice actor because many times they're like, if they recognize me very often for my for, for my voice, that means something is missing. But when people doesn't recognize me that often, they feel like, yes, I'm I'm aiming the target. So is that a correct assumption or that's how do you feel about that? I- I, you know, I'd never actually thought about it because, um, like when we're, when we're doing recording, um, especially at Sentai, it's, it's very much like, we're not trying to do like anime voice. We're trying to just sound like people try to sound a little bit more casual with, with emotion and expression. Um, but we're just trying to sound like normal folks. And then, um, But when you say that, like, yeah, no, I, I actually, I take that as a compliment because I'm not trying. I'm not trying to sound different, but because I'm being a character, you don't recognize me. And so it's, it's a little bit of both. Like, I'm not trying to sound like a different person, um, but it still, it still has that effect, which, yeah, no, it definitely feels that way. I'm like, mm, the question, yeah. My question would be, um, do you try, because I know you, you just, you just literally said, uh, you're not trying to sound like anything in particular, but when you have a specific character, do you try to give it a different personality? Um, and maybe that is why your voice sounds different. Exactly. No, I think that's, I think that's it. And I think for some of the characters like Fafta, that's, that's not where this is. That's a, it's a different voice, but, um, But yeah, I think it, it really depends on the personality um, of the character. I think that does change it. But right now, in Hats, you have a very big challenge with the latest anime that you're dubbing right now, Urusei Yasura, mm-hmm. which for me, when I saw it first, the first, first thing that crossed my mind, it was like, oh my God, the pressure that this voice actor must be feeling, because we're talking about a classic anime from the early 2000s, if I'm not wrong, which technically is when the anime was starting to gain terrain, and technically the best way to watch anime was by Miracle, Air TV, or VHS, when you had to rent the VHS. So yeah. we're talking about nostalgia, and suddenly I see that they bring this beautiful Siri with the beautiful art of today's day, And when I see the voice, I'm like, oh, they're going to dock it. I'm like, okay, now the challenge gets real. So how do you feel being the main uh, voice act, main character and voice of, of Shinobu? Shinobu. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a, it's like you said, it's one of those roles that it's like, oh my gosh, that's like, it's definitely an, an homage to some OG anime. It's, it's. I think it's really well done. It's a beautiful, 
remake. Um, the I am in love with all of the other actors. I think that I think that the sub that the Japanese, the original Japanese, is really good. Um, I was watching it as I was preparing for the role, and I was like, okay, this is really good. Um, so it's it can be really intimidating, but I think um, the people in the studio. Uh, Shannon Reed is the director, and and all of the cast has just kind of bring in. They're all really enjoying the project. Um, so when we get in the studio, whenever I'm in there in the booth, um, it's just like a it's a bouncy room. Everyone's really excited. It takes everything. Like I have to make sure that I'm bringing a ton of energy to the role, but also not just shouting every line. <laughs> um, is probably one of the biggest uh, is one of the biggest challenges because it is like the urusei yatsura means like. Uh, obnoxious people that's what it translates to everyone is obnoxious that's what that means and so like you just have to kind of bring that to it and so in the booth itself it's so much fun and so high energy that i i'm able to not think about it as much but definitely like outside of the booth i'm i can get a little psyched out because it's fun and it's uh, people love this show as they should If you had to describe that series, Urusei Yasura, how would you describe it for the people who haven't heard uh, from it before, or they haven't associated mm -hmm. yet? <laughs> um, it's it's definitely. <sighs> I think it, it follows some really fun character tropes. So you have your obnoxious Casanova who thinks he's all that. Um, <laughs> he thinks he's Casanova, um, and then there's always a love triangle, and then there's aliens. Um, so alien love triangle with a bunch of like almost every episode. There's a new, there's a new person or a new alien or a new like whatever. There's a new thing that everyone has to deal with um, every single episode. So in that sense, it's it's like a it's it's definitely a callback to nostalgia. It's episodic in that the um, the plot is based on there's something new almost every episode. It's not it is building on the series, but it's it's new every every chance. Kind of like the the old Star Trek series. It's like ah, here's the new alien we have to deal with, um, and then it, it's just it's they do a good job of doing. Um, uh, I'm going to say homage a million times, but doing homage to the original um, illustration as well as updating it and refreshing it and making it beautiful. Like, oh, the illustration is so good. Um, so I don't know if I explained that very well, but <laughs> um, that's it's it's basically it's basically like a well done um, capsule remake of the original series. It's it's nostalgic. It's retro, but it's updated. So, do you find it easier to do some prior research on the original series, and does it help you actually to produce your own take on the voice of this new reanimation? Hmm. Or do you see some of the same directive that was used on the original to be implemented on this new generation? That's a good question. Um, I I try depending on like time in in my own life my personal life and like what i how much time i have to prep for a part or how much like resources sometimes i don't have access to the sub or um or the japanese like before um i try to do as much as possible i try to know where my character is going or at least watch a couple of episodes so i get an idea about what their personality is like um so i try to do as much prep as possible Um, as far as the plot and as far as hearing hearing what the vibe of the show is like um, and then and then just like being in the studio and talking about it making sure I know exactly what I'm recording and what's going on um, instead of like just doing it on the spot sometimes can be difficult um, and especially for a show like this it's like okay I, I want to know like I want to know what I'm getting into before I get to the studio um, and then And then having like a voice in mind beforehand, um, I'll play with it. I'll think about it, but it's so much of it kind of has to do with like, I don't want to psych myself out or think too much about it um, because a lot of the times the director cast me for the thing that I brought in the audition or for what I've done before. Um, and so it usually becomes like, okay, how's this sounding? 
um, or even in the first the first episode, we'll do a run of it, and I'll be I'll be where I feel naturally. Um, for the character, and then if they don't like it, we we go back over it, or they're like, "This is great, let's build on this." Um, so I I come in with an idea, I come in with like the placement of where I think my voice should be, and then and then working with the director and the engineer is kind of where that like shapes up and finishes out. And this series, um, when I watched the first episode, and many folks that today enjoy from anime, they we have, to, we have to be honest. They join us very recently. They're not the OG old school from the 1990s. So when I first saw this episode, I was with Kiara, and my first reaction was, "Hey, Kiara, that's the anime that I grew up with. That's the same school from Grandma and a Half." Uh, before dragon ball g uh, dragon ball mm -hmm. it, it is a comedy and it i, I would say not today days there's almost a anime this that type of format the comedy the humor uh, mm -hmm. it, it is very unique from that timeline so so you said that the direct um you're very uh, you're mindful that when you're performing as, as the voice actor you're trying to keep in mind Uh, that the director is expecting what you're really um, you out is for it. So, would you consider that? Can can you can we say like you have like an affinity for rom coms because when you have a very Ooh. big career background in animes that can and they all have something in common. I mean, also most of them, at least your character, comedy, uh, comedy, or mm -hmm. romance, or disaster, which we're going to get into that very soon. <laughs> This is, I, you know, I think, <laughs> um, I'm glad you made that connection because I think the one I made a couple months ago, I was recording for, um, which one was it? I was recording for, oh, um, <clears throat> the name, the name. I played Momo in, uh, the name of that anime that just fell from my brain. Um, it, was, it was about assassins. Oh. <laughs> I've done so much since then. It wasn't Assassin's Pride. It was it was the assassin and her, the executioner and her way of life. Oh, okay. Um, a really fun one, and that one is um, it, that one's kind of a a dramedy. Uh, it's oh, it's a really fun one. Um, but I was playing Momo, and the connection that I made about my characters is that I play uh, gals with like pink or red or orange hair. Um, So that was definitely a much more eloquent <laughs> way, but I do think the girls with pink or orange hair end up being in those kind of dramedy rom-coms. Um, so uh, you put those pieces together that I was just like, hmm, they all have pink hair. <laughs> it, for me, that one, I have to be honest, so many times it happened to me, I'm very ignorant, and I'm the worst person to line up voices. Kiara, she have a nice ear that she like oh that's the voice actor she kid a lot easy i'm the worst one so many times i'm like oh my god i love this voice actor when i go to the do my research I'm like hold it they have all this in common and in your case when we speak your latest character um shinobu she have a little bit of all your experience and right now from technically mm -hmm. from the most fun the most romance the most disaster romance and the most disaster disaster like one of the biggest series that i think one of the darkest one that you have right now is mating a beast season two which is one of the series that it make it, it makes its own noise and doesn't need from a big company to be recognized by what it is and This season, you performed one of the key character, which when we saw the trailer, we we're like, okay, so it's just going to be a new character. We're going to see it for a few episodes, and it's going to be gone. And I don't think we ever consider it crossed our mind how main important, how much impact that character was going to create in the whole series. We're talking about Futa from Made in Abyss season Futa. two. So that character, it, how was the experience of dubbing this character, which can go from the cutest to the darkest that you can imagine this beautiful, innocent, dark world? Mm -hmm. um, mm, yeah. <laughs> um, so 
that one was, I think I, I, had, I was aware, of course, I, I knew about Maiden Abyss before and I knew about the vibe of the show and I knew how things happened to turn out in that show. Um, and so I knew going in, I was like, all right, this is gonna get intense. Um, and I also was like researching the character and I was like, okay, I'm, this is gonna get intense. Um, but I, I don't, I don't know what would have prepared me for that. Also, I, it wasn't until I watched the original, until I watched the Japanese dub that I was starting to, it was hitting me how intense that process was going to be. Um, which again, like complete, like props to, to the Japanese recording of that. She, the original VA is like amazing. Like that was probably one of my favorite performances to listen to for FAPTA. Um, amazing. And so also to live up to that, um, that was kind of another process, another series where there are some diehard Made in Abyss fans out there <laughs> and they have some strong opinions and, and they're so passionate about this show for, again, for very wonderful, good reasons, because it is such a good show. Um, it's its own, it's its own niche. Like I, I know it's anime, it, it appears like anime, but it, it makes its own rules and then it breaks those rules again and again. And the writing is really wonderful. The animation, the music, like it's just across the board, like kind of a groundbreaking anime. Um, so, so there was that going into it, already knowing that. Um, but again, I think I, once I got in the booth, once I found Fata, which was, a, it was a very different voice for me. Um, as you, as we've talked about my, a lot of my girls are, they're like cute little redhead girls. Um, so to do this was, was intense. Um, and it was really freeing and wonderful to like play this little gremlin character. Um, who is like grappling with her sense of language and what does that sound like? And how do I sound like um, someone who's learning to speak while not sounding like a robot and kind of like doing, doing, um, being honest by that character and, and being respectful of that character and trying to create something that, that makes sense and sounds right um, to people's ears. Um, so I, you, and you never know, you, you don't please everyone. And I, and I never go into an anime, like hoping that everyone's going to love it. Cause that's not realistic. Um, but I came away from that really, really proud of what I did and, and really excited. I was always like super excited to go in for that one. Um, and, uh, you know, there's just something cathartic about getting to go in and not to to spoil anything, if you haven't watched Maiden Abyss season two, go see it. If you have a strong stomach, um, <laughs> we're gonna spoil. Yeah. I've been already released over six months, so we can go soft with the spoil. I mean, my rule is <laughs> if it's more than three months, six months, it's too late already. And now, again, okay. I'm not wasting my chance to talk about this with a voice actor of this series. <laughs> For those who haven't watched Maiden Abyss, Maiden Abyss is the beauty and the innocence in the darkest gore that you can imagine many times people who see for the first time meeting a beast we get confused or tricked by the innocent on the animation that we see in the first two episodes where you're seeing kids explorer called cave riders who just want to go down to the abyss abyss being the center like a volcano but instead of volcano it's only lava it's worse than lava there's mystery inside that big hole and people try to go deeper as deeper because first there there are treasures over there second humanity start getting lost as you go deeper and they have like a map where they divided this by floor by this floor only people these people are allowed to from this floor people start changing humanity by this floor and this is the floor of no coming back so many people describe it as the walking to the their own hell experience and it sounds dramatic but i don't think there's a better way to describe this uh, uh story and we have this main character who has her mother was a big explorer okay writer however she went so deep in the abyss that she cannot make it back however she got a note 
from her mom. So now she's wondering, my mom is alive or not? I want to see my mom. How can I see it again? Let's go down the abyss. So, and we have a uh, side character, which we don't know where this kid came from, and we don't know a story about it. The deeper the story you go, the darker, the more surprise you get. And I don't know. I don't think there's any point of the story where you can say, I was expecting that. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. I have a, I have a question like, just to satisfy my curiosity. Um, when you before you even got the role of Fapta, had you watched Made in Abyss before? I had started. That was one of the anime that I I was like, wow, this is so big, and I love I love Lucy. Like she's amazing, and I, I love the, that cast. Um, and I'd started it. And then I was like, wow, this is intense and I can't just watch it casually <laughs> um, so as, that, as easily yeah. as I can <laughs> others. So when when y- so you started watching it out of your your own accord, like you didn't hear mm-hmm. anybody say, oh, it's a good anime or anything like that. It was just like, OK, let's just hit play on this. Kind of. It was one that I'd heard about. It was really it was really big um, at the studio at the time. And so I'd watched it because uh, because it had a buzz around the studio. Um, not necessarily mm-hmm. because I heard about it from anywhere other than the people who were working on it. So my question is that you go that you go in it knowing how it how it was how it was going to turn out to be, or you didn't know absolutely anything except everybody was saying, Oh, it's good and nothing. Okay. So yeah. when you first started it, did you ever like episode one or episode two, did you ever think it was gonna get to as dark as it as it got <laughs> no 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 everyone who said it was good they always were like yeah it's good <laughs> they would uh-huh. kind of do that like they would be like yeah it's, it's a good one <laughs> <laughs> wow. and i'd be like what is this why are they saying it like this now i have to know um there was always a little bit of mystery and no one would ever say why it was good um but i'd be like okay there's there's some layers to this Um, but yeah, no, I, the first episode, I was like, wow, it's precious. Why is everyone acting so weird? And then the further you go into the hole, the further, <laughs> the further so, from humanity you get. Because of, because of this, uh, I kind of have a question. Now, we, uh, as Onyx stated, there is a similarity on the majority of the characters that you play. Being a happy, hopeless, romantic kind of stuff, right? But knowing that you are playing Fakta in made it the abyss were you excited to portray in your voice acting the the kind of suffering the degradation of the character as the story progresses like how did you picture yourself saying okay i know for a fact that this is going to start off as a happy character how am i going to express all the pain that this character is going through like was there a specific kind of skill Well, not, not skill, but more like technique. Is it a specific kind of technique that you use? Like, do you think that one time that pet died and you're like, okay, let me see how I can project this in my pain. Like, is it is it some kind of process like that? Because <laughs> it's a big change from going to like a very happy person to like, I am suffering. If any hell is better than this. <laughs> um, mm, so... So for, yes, the difference being like, whenever you're going into a role that like these characters, uh, the pink haired girls um, live a life that like, you can kind of go into the studio off the street and you can smile when you say your lines and that's gonna read, people are gonna hear that she's happy. She's gonna yell at a boy for being stupid. and, And that's kind of like, some of the depth obviously there's much more depth than that but it's a lot easier to tap into that part of a person um walking off the street for fafta she does things and goes through things and experiences things that i don't experience on a daily basis um i can't pull from uh, a lot of my personal experiences like straight from the book. There's a lot of things that I experience internally, emotionally, mentally, um, that I can make those connections. But um, it's definitely more of an acting challenge. It takes a little bit more technique um, for me personally. 
um, in a fun way. I, I find for myself, it's less about thinking about like a moment where I was sad and more about, um, especially with voice acting, like as, a, as an acting thing. With voice acting, if I can put myself in the studio, it's just me in that tiny little room. Um, any of the, like the stress or, stress or whatever is inside my body already um, is there. And I don't necessarily need to use it. I can I can kind of put myself in physical situations, whether that's like squeezing my hands or burying my body or, or doing something physical um, is usually where I come up with that. Like I've got all the rage I need because I, I may look like a sweet, happy person, but like it's there. <laughs> um, but if I can like hold my body in a certain way or talk in a certain way, um, that starts to bubble up without me having to really like uh, use personal experiences that I have to think about specifically because that tends to stop working. Um, if I think about that one time, this sh like sad thing happened to me. I'm sorry, I almost cussed there. <laughs> um, something happened to me. Um, sometimes that stops working. But if I know, okay, when I hold my body like this, or when I use my voice like this, it starts to make my body have the reaction of, of scared, of sad, of angry, um, that helps and is a little bit more reliable. Um, or especially if I'm not feeling it that day, if I'm not feeling super sad or super angry, um, the replication of it in my body will do a lot of the work for me. Um, and it usually gets me there. Like I, I can go into the studio and I'm ha I've had a great day, but if I if I hold my body a certain way, if I if I hold my diaphragm or my center, my pelvis a certain way, um, I'll start to cry all of a sudden. And it's not because I'm thinking about dead puppies. It's because uh, muscle memory. Um, I don't know. So it, that is kind of an after question where it's like, you know, I've trained myself to like trust myself. And, and I don't know. Um, I really love that question. But yeah, it's... I'm a physical person. I'm an out in kind of person. I don't have to think about stuff so much as much as it is like replicating sadness with my body usually creates sadness. If that makes sense. Oh, it does. It does. Thank you very much. That was, uh, mm -hmm. that was, that was really something because <laughs> I would have never thought that, you know, replicating a position or some kind of action with your body would actually affect your emotions that way. Mm -hmm. That's, but I, I get I get what you said about not using the same imagery because I, I was we in Spanish call creando callo which is like we create that kind of callus to where it points like you don't care anymore it's like oh mm -hmm. another thing that died whatever yep. then, yeah then we have cat in more dark character what happened with cat why she's in darker character now oh because she didn't too much about dead puppies <laughs> 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 but uh, I watch the series in dub i waited all this time and i never watched it sub i always i'm a very dub person when i saw first fop that i couldn't understand her what was going on fop is a character that she, when she is big from the beginning she's holding anger pain suffering later on when we keep watching the season two we're in it we're finding out her source, her origin, which technically she's carrying a lot of pain from her mother. And it's a very uh, sad, dark, heavy, angry, all the negative emotion in the character. But however, you have to express, uh, hold those emotions from the first second in, the, in the season one, in that season. And for us who watched it in dub, we didn't know what's going on until at the end that we're not we now can make the connection why she's big like this, why she behaves like this, why she's the princess of this hell was gonna. Did you knew all these factors from the end point of this season two? Or how it happened that you you knew what to try, that you, technically you made the, per per the perfect puzzle that from episode one, we don't know what, why, who she is, and at the end we're like, okay, now it makes sense why, why she behaves as big like this. Um, so I had done like some reading and some research ahead. I knew that it was really like she was holding a lot in. It wasn't just, um, it wasn't just, I'm a cute little marshmallow character. Like I knew 
that there was some really intense, like I knew revenge was going to be a big part of it. I knew, I knew that kind of like generational carryover from her mother was going to be a big part of it. Um, but I didn't know, I, I hadn't watched those scenes until a couple of sessions before that, uh, before I got to that recording session. I think I, I think I watched those episodes like one or two times before I went in to do it. Um, so I knew it was coming up at a certain point in the series. Since it was a, um, a simul dub, it wasn't all released, I think, I believe, before I um, got to record the first episode. Oh, I dropped something. Before I got to record the first episode, I, I hadn't seen those episodes just yet. I knew that something was going to happen. I knew the basics of the plot, um, but I hadn't seen the performance yet. I hadn't seen the animation yet um so right from the beginning i knew it was like okay like there's some background stuff there's some there's a lot of information that's being withheld just from watching the first episode i knew um that i had to like carry some complexity to it she had to have a couple of sides to her um but no i didn't know i didn't know how far it was going to go until further into the process before um, we go to sorry yeah before we go to the next series, which, when I said, be, which scene impact you? The first one across your mind, which see impact from the whole series, season one, season two, really, for the first one across your mind that really hit you back? That really hit me? Um, you still get, can get over it. Yeah. I mean, it's those, it's the, um, it's, And I, I guess thinking of it in sessions, because I did scenes, we would do it where I would record all of the attacking or all of the fighting, and then we'd go back and do the um, the flashbacks. Because a lot of some of the episodes, especially at the end, it's it's like fight, flashback, fight, flashback. But in the recording session, I did fight, and then I did flashback. Or depending on how my voice was going, I'd do flashback and then fight. Um, And so those, I think it would have been specifically episode, oh gosh, and it, it spanned over so many episodes. It was like season or episode nine to 12 or episode 10 to 12. Like there were like three of them. Um, but it would have been the, the fighting, I think, because I went back and I did those scenes, some of the sweeter scenes, some of the flashbacks. Um, the kind of emotional payoff of what was happening. Um, it was really big. It was like, I'd go through a whole session screaming and, and crying and, and ripping people apart. <laughs> and then I'd go and I'd do Sweet Fapta. And um, that's what it is. It's when Gabaroon gets killed. It's when Gabaroon, spoilers. Um, it was Gabaroon. It was uh, doing the flashback sessions of Gabaroon and then watching Gabaroon. Um, that was actually really rough for me. And that was a character that like, emotionally, there's not a whole lot of like, he's a robot. So it's not like there was this huge emotional thing, but they had a really deep, really sweet relationship. And so reacting to that after recording the beginnings of their relationship and how things came and how he took care of her and then watching the end of their relationship um that one was really rough for me <laughs> that impacted me a lot just many i'm still can get over about the water a uh, simple fact just the water when they start exploring that they thought they finally found water and they're like we get, finally have water and because in this level there's no water and we found it and then it started getting sick and like oh yeah there's no water it's living there we're drinking living organisms and what are we going to do they're drinking it because we have nothing else. yeah it's so much to get marked uh -huh. yes so um I was talking about, oh yeah, speaking of your range, um, <laughs> I wanted to go to this uh, borderline psycho character who, again, is pretty much comes from a school of everybody's pretty much borderline psycho, if not full on psycho. Um, this character, she uh, loves her nails, which I found extremely particularly uh, 
uh, I can't even find the word. It, it just uh, it made it made my skin crawl. What happens? Uh, so for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, I'm talking about Itsuki uh, Sumuragi in Gakigurui. <laughs> my question for you is: uh, How do you feel? Or how, where do you find it in yourself to uh, personify such a extreme character when you compare it to all the other ones you voiced before because this one is you know she's not pink hair she is not pink hair but she loves her pink nails <laughs> she does. um yeah i so the one about that show and like the style of that show is that it seems kind of like the high school it seems like it's a high school it seems like one of those like uniform we're all in our uniform um going to class anime <laughs> yeah. right and then and then they're not um so it was really fun to find like i guess like the the way the episode goes is that it is it's peppy it's preppy it's fun it's high school and then it's very much not um because they are so separate it was really easy to just like make a jump. It wasn't like a build. It was like, no, you're one or the other. You're you're cute girl or you're psycho. Um, and so I, I, for me as an actor, like that's a really fun jump to make because you can go from, oh my gosh, everything's so sweet. And here we are to like, <laughs> I'm gonna rip your head off. Or you're not. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, so maybe that's telling, I hope that's not like telling of something deeper in myself as a person, <laughs> but um, it wasn't too far of a drop off. It, it's really fun to find that part of yourself and let go and feel like I'm in a safe place. I'm in a box. I'm in literally a padded box. I can't hurt anyone. Why not just let it go for a second? You know, I've been driving in traffic for for 30 minutes. Now is my chance to 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 like <laughs> be a little bit, um, a little bit. And load uh, your entire road rage in there. <laughs> yeah, sure, exactly. Like I'm I'm able to let go. I'm I'm able to to use that to feel things. Um, so for that one, it was it was nice because I didn't have to make it this smooth transition. It was actually creepier and scarier to make it a very apparent switch between the two. Um, so that one was really fun. And, and just the, that, that show, the style, the theme song, it's so it's so cool. It's, was, it's, so, it's very out there, um, Gonix, because I was all I was going to say is, um, I think out of us three, the only one who hasn't seen it is Onyx, and I keep telling I him, you gotta go I watch that movie, uh, that that, uh, that series. <laughs> both, I've seen both. enough, and I still keep asking around how that series is not mature, which I still don't understand the standards. And uh, I, I, when, when you describe that moment where you're acting... I just, I don't know why I picture all the psychology student. Hmm, so topic of my thesis. Are voice actors really acting or just expressing themselves? So. <laughs> I don't know. I, you know, I, I get cast as these, I, it's the same thing happened for Momo and the execution of her way of life. It was Fapta, it was Itsuki. They're these like tiny people who, who just on a switch can get really angry. And I'm, that's not me. That's, That's not me. What? <laughs> I'm not going to talk to a psychologist about that. That's fine. What does that mean? <laughs> And I can say that theory is another level. Parents or whoever has kids, um, even that doesn't say mature, hold it. Hold it with solid emergency brakes because there's so many scenes that I'm like, there's a hang tight scene why am i sitting here really and i'm like what is it this is netflix what's what's wrong here and they're very funny characters um i've seen enough i think already well <laughs> just the intro alone is you should know like just just from the intro alone it's like no no even if it doesn't necessarily seem mature it's a pretty mature uh <laughs> series yeah No, I've had I've had teens come up to me and say, "Oh my gosh, I love this show." And I'm like, "Oh my gosh, you love this show?" <laughs> I'm glad it, I mean, it's a good show, but also yeah, yeah, no, it, it's a yeah. <laughs> it's also do your parents know you're watching this show? Like, are you alone at your house when you're watching? No, you shouldn't be watching this. <laughs> but even though I feel like 
which one that is mature but shouldn't be that mature is Foot War. Foot War, they show a lot of body picture, but they don't go into the detail, you know what I mean? However, it's considered mature. How Foot War is mature next to Kakeguri? Kakeguri? Kakeguri. Ah, and being 17 plus, something, I feel like the, the way the balance was broke at that time, because... yeah. No one asks me. I don't know how to how to rate the standards on these. Like to the, the rating suggestions, I don't. <laughs> I and, would put those let's, up let's in the same. Way. If you were to summarize, um, Kat, if you were to summarize Kakiguru in like one sentence or two, what would you say? High school has underground killer gambling ring. <laughs> Oh my god, I forgot about that. I forgot about that one. The one. Oh yes. <laughs> wow, okay. Yes, so I agree with Onyx. Um, I, I'm not, again, I'm not sure why it's not rated mature. I, maybe it is, or, I, or we've overlooked it. I don't know. Maybe they changed it. Um, in regards to food wars, uh, <laughs> food wars, I'd say it's more for the orgasms rather than, the, <laughs> than anything else they, ch they show in there. Um, speaking of food wars, um, you uh, you had um, Anne. No, wait. Was it Anne in food yeah. wars? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I, I, okay, I got to be honest. I honestly do not remember if I watched till third plate and above um because at, at one point it, i did i don't, I don't remember because the thing is it had stopped and then i had to wait till the next season came on but mm -hmm. i i totally forgot because i was already i was already in school so i'm like oh crap <laughs> mm -hmm. so how was your experience um voicing Anne? that was a fun one Um, the, we call them foodgasms in the studio. <laughs> um, I, was about, I was about to make a disclaimer. Hey guys, Kiara just drove one term over there. Uh, it's not what everybody is thinking, what it should be used for. It's something really different. Sorry. Yes, I know. I know it's foodgasm. I totally forgot the word, but it's, it's whatever, <laughs> same thing. I know, I, 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 it really crossed my mind, like, perfect, there go the YouTube flag. So now I'm going to deal with YouTube Why I'm uh, uploading mature <laughs> content on YouTube. But yeah, you were saying, it's not, as you said, it, we're talking about foodcast. <laughs> we can cut this if we need to. <laughs> um, about, about the excitement, the extreme, extreme excitement over food feelings. and people's, people's <laughs> physical feelings and reactions to the, the greatness of the food, food. <laughs> <laughs> that they're eating it's about food it's all about food everything is about the food um i'll i'll move away from that recording for that one was fun it was um i came in for for yeah it's been a while third plate Um, or for, I think it was the end of third plate. We came in as judges and I was like, what is, I hadn't, I think I'd heard about it. I knew about it, um, because it was so popular. And then I was like, oh, cool. I get to record for this cool show. Um, and then I went in and I was like, oh, cool. This is a weird show. <laughs> um, <laughs> and it was just one of those, like, I, I absolutely adore everyone at Sentai. I've I've always had really wonderful experiences with the directors and the engineers. And so like this was it was like a testament of the trust and the and the like safe environment at that studio where I'd go in and I'd be like, okay, we're gonna do this. And then and then Kyle Jones is the director and he'd be like, anime. <laughs> Um, and so like I went in and I, you know, I never felt uncomfortable. We'd giggle about it and we'd be like, okay, that one works. That sound works. <laughs> um, yeah. I can just imagine and, all the yeah. people, all the people walk, walk in the hallways and suddenly they hear a scene and they're like, and everybody like. <laughs> Anime. Like soundproof room. <laughs> Are they soundproof booths? Uh, pretty sound, uh, soundproof. Pretty soundproof. I think I've heard. I've heard some people screaming. Screams can usually get out, but that's about it. 
But for the war, before you go, before you keep going, Ronnie, before you keep going, I'm just gonna say story time. Um, we were, I think it was when uh, Food Wars had just come out, or maybe maybe uh, the second season was gonna come out sometime. Like I don't, I don't remember. Point is, Onyx and I, we were at a Renaissance fair, <laughs> and we were talking to um, the daughter, <laughs> the daughter of the person who who invited us there. She was 16 at the time, and Onyx was like, "Oh, hey, you you, you watch anime? That's so cool! Oh, have you watched Food Wars yet?" And she was she she looks Onyx yeah, straight she- in the eye, like, um. No, I can't. <laughs> and, and Onyx is like all innocent, but but why? And she's like, do you know what goes on in that show? Like, have you watched the first episode? <laughs> like, I can't watch it. <laughs> I can't and yeah, so watch that's it. it. In my defense, it's because I watch it for the drama <laughs> and for the recipes, right, right. not for that things. <laughs> and uh, I will be honest, food war. We have done in the Spanish version of our channel many analysis or review. And when we speak about the recipes, whatever they're cooking, they're not joking about it. They're, they're really used real kitchen te- uh, culinary techniques, which many times you're going to be like, oh, this is just a show. But when you apply, you can try yourself and you see it really work as it is. The omelet, for me, it killed me that simplicity of the omelet. Uh, when they have in a competition and he they have to like the competition that is that they need to produce a big amount in a short period of time if you don't successfully deliver those hundred portion you're out there of the school and omelet whoever who has eat omelet before we know it tastes great it's, it's, it's somebody making know how to do it fluffy but what happened after three minutes it dies and I never thought about it and he's talking about oh so this is I had this problem they're dying and once it dies people start losing attraction because I appear so this is going to change it's just a freaking scramble like fancy and this going to the technical culinary how to make it attractive keep it and then you're like so yeah so that that's why I forgot about those food games and I went to the for the drama and for the art of cooking I love it. I love and, this little reaction. <laughs> and on my defense. So pure. So <laughs> I will argue I will argue that. Yeah, I will argue that when we watched that first episode, I was like even before the the, the ending where the food gasms happen, um, I was just salivating so much like during the entire actually during the entire season. I was salivating so much that I was like, Onyx, I can't I can't watch this on an empty stomach. It's just that good. Like the uh, like the animation, the art, everything and how they're presenting it. I'm just like, oh, my gosh, I'm, 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 Onyx, we got to go eat something. I can't. It's a, good, it's a good series itself but the problem is uh at least for us uh, i believe we've become desensitized to that kind of information already because like kera said story time my sister doesn't like anime and i was like you know what you like iron chef you like Ma- uh, hell's kitchen i'm gonna show you a good anime and i completely <laughs> just went to like the cooking and the techniques first episode yeah. you know that lunas comes in and she goes what are you putting in my house? And I'm like, I forgot this was like this. I am so sorry. It's true. You get desensitized to it because anime. Like you, you just think that's the that's the silly part that's happening. Like, of course that's gonna happen. But like it's true. Like there is the food is amazing. It's so every time I'd record for that show, I'd be like, well, now I need to go get food i need to go <laughs> eat um yeah no it's true but you you do kind of forget about that <laughs> and so, i love the fact uh, I, I before you keep going on this is really quick it, it builds up on on Eliud's story um so this so we were we're talking about a 16 year old or just underage i don't know um Eliud, is your sister underage or is she or no, how, like, how? she She's old. Lele. I'm 33. Right. Let's just say she's older than that. I'm not gonna she say. Will kill, she's gonna oh, kill okay. me next time. She's yeah. old. Right. Because yeah. so, so, 
I was I was visiting my sister and uh, her husband and boyfriend at the time um, were there at her uh, her apartment and we're watching this and I'm like oh hey you like cooking I'm gonna put a I'm gonna put a, you a fantastic anime in which you can actually learn a lot of cooking techniques and we got to the last part of the first episode and he just grabs every single uh, um, every single pillow. <laughs> on the couch and just throws it at me like what are you making me watch what is this <laughs> yes even with adults that happens technically we have been going through all the characters you went like multi pathetic we can say from cutie uh, super cute love romary drama dark as a hell darker and darker uh, sorry now how do you do, how do you land in this uh culture in this, uh, no culture, the, the art of dubbing, because not everybody knows from the beginning. Let me start asking first. When the idea of becoming a voice actor start, and they knew it from the beginning, from kindergarten, say, I want to be a voice mm -hmm. actor, or by any chance you were, you, you were in the science, natural science pathway, and suddenly you became a voice actor, like 90% of the voice actor at this point. Um, okay, so... For me, I I grew up, I wasn't in the anime world. I I was really, I was adjacent. I, a lot of my friends watched anime. Like they were, back when it wasn't popular, all of my guy friends were, were, the, were the guys who like loved to watch anime. Um, and so I grew up like knowing the characters. I'd watch Naruto. For me, I grew up on, um, it's animation, but it's Avatar The Last Airbender was like the formative kind of voice actor parts of, of my life. Um, before I even knew I wanted to be an actor, before I was going into that, that's what I grew up on. Um, and then I, I had pursued a theater career and I went to University of Houston um, to pursue acting. And I, it, for me, I'm one of those cases of I was in the right place at the right time. Um, my professor was uh, Adam Noble. He is, um, he had voiced at Sentai before. Um, and through that connection, they had asked like, do you have students? We're about to have a round of auditions coming up. If you have any suggestions for us, for our cattle call, for like the big call, um, we would we would call some of them in. And so I was on that list. I got an audition. Um, they, they got like a snippet of my voice and I went in and I, I really had no idea what I was doing. Um, and, and so <laughs> I, I was really excited. Like I, I came at it more from an actor standpoint, more from like, I, I grew to appreciate and, and love and fall for anime much later in my life, um, in the last like 10 years, as opposed to, um, having since, since childhood. Um, but it's, a uh, Yeah, I got really lucky. I was in the right place at the right time. And, and so I came up at it from a performance theater field um, going into it and then doing my research and then just falling in love with the people here and, and, the, and the fans I wasn't expecting, um, especially in the last couple of years, like interacting with people and interacting with fans and supporters has been really wonderful. Um, like I, I love this community. Um, I'm really glad that this is where my career has brought me um, because it is a community. It is a group of people that's really special. Um, so that's how I came into it. And then for the last, I was a, so, I was like the end of my sophomore year of college, maybe no end of junior year. So junior year going into senior year, about five, it's been about five years now. Um, yeah. It's been it's been a ride, but yeah, that that's how I got into it. We actually like asking this question because we've seen different people from different backgrounds. Uh, we've seen theater kids actually move into this kind of uh, career. We also see actors, but the things that the ones that we've seen more and more lately is um, engineers. People had nothing to do with it. They were like, "Oh yeah, I was studying engineering," and then all of a sudden it clicked on me. Oh, I kind of want to study this. Because I found it, I found it interesting, and I'm doing that. Like technically, I have the title of engineer, but I'm not using it. I'm just, uh -huh. I'm just using it to decorate my wall. I'm solely concentrating on voice acting. I don't know. Um, 
one person that actually stood out to me, one of your office actors was, uh, I don't know if you know her, her name is Anne Yako. I believe she was a, a, a physicist mm -hmm. and she became a voice actor. She like left that side of her career. She was like, oh yeah, I just like voice acting now. And it's, it was, it's surprising to see how people can just switch to one thing to another. Specifically for us, it's kind of shocking because we're, we're Hispanics and not only that, we're Puerto Rican. Our mothers are be like, no, you are not throwing away four, five, six years of study. You will not do this. You need a steady source of income. You do need this and that and that. And it's like, it's shocking to us to see a lot of people getting a lot of support from everywhere else. Yeah. Like, we're, we're rooting for all y'all. So, you know, all of us <laughs> that are outcasts from society, we need somebody to follow. So please. <laughs> <laughs> adding to that we know we hear from them in the in especially in the boy in the spanish episode many of the male voice actors they had to do a science de degree but they did behind their parents the side story for acting and some of them are like okay you can do acting you can do those funny voices but you need to finish your engineering your science degree so they had to deal with two degrees and at the end they yeah. they went through it and they find mm -hmm. their life in the voice so it, it's so odd i keep saying if i go to psychology anytime I, any day i'm going to do a thesis how what's going on in science uh, natural science student that they end up in voice acting <laughs> there's something over there going on That's so interesting. Yeah, I love that. That's I I 100% support if you are I think anyone can be an actor. I think anyone like there's there's things that you can learn, but if, of all the people who can who can do something like multitasking and and like putting pieces together, scientists and engineers are the ones who can do it. Um So that's really inspiring. <laughs> I'm going to bring a culture shock fact that, I mean, not fact, but the experience of getting here. In the Spanish community, I rarely, I hear people saying everybody can be a voice actor. I hear it the mm -hmm. other way. Not everybody can be a voice actor. It's exactly the negative. However, since we start getting to the English voice acting community, Like you and many of the voice actors we interview and at the convention, I hear it the other way. I hear them say, everybody can be a voice actor. So it makes to the point that uh, we were guests in one of the last conventions that we visit. And when we're in the guest rooms, I see this voice actor walk in. He's a very senior, very respected voice actor. And I, hey, I go to, hey, let me just uh, say thanks for everything. And let me share this feedback, like just what I say right now. And he was like, yeah, I'm kind of not surprised, honestly. But again, it depends a lot by culture. So yeah, that's something that it really makes me happy to hear it now because I feel like from the beginning and the guys can tell me if I'm wrong or maybe I'm just wrong, just making this stuff. But I feel like when we started this podcast, many people used to say, not everybody can be a voice actor because you need to go to discipline, which is true. You need to go to your training classes and you need to dedicate your life. However, it's not the same go for it, chase it, take the classes, then say you cannot be, now anybody can be a voice actor. And now we see, and we have you like today, tonight saying that everybody can be a voice actor. I think so. I, I personally, I'm, I'm never for like, yeah, people can change people. Everyone has what they have and, and everyone, I don't know, it's very, it can be seen as kind of granola, but like you have everything you need And you can, like, everyone can do anything. I, I would personally have a harder time jumping into the role of an engineer or a scientist. Um, but I don't know, if you're if you're a person, if you understand emotions and then do the training and, and all of the technical stuff, but that's stuff that you learn. Like, I don't know. I, I, really, I really think everyone has what they, everything, everyone has everything they need. And I think as long as you trust yourself when voice acting and you're honest, um, I don't know. It's one of those flexible ones that I, I'm always interested to hear anyone. No, mm. definitely. I'm going to bring a different turnaround on the talk because you brought you brought a point that it never was never been brought to us before. All your series of anime that you had dubbed before, I thought, and I'm sure many people who are seeing this, They thought that they were dubbed under 
another company being Funimation, when it used to be Funimation, Crunchyroll, and who knows what. You spread, you mention many times the name Sentai Film with many people, which I'm big fan, and I'm not kidding, not because you're here. I'm a big, big, big supporter of Sentai Film, even that still don't understand what they are. The reason why I'm very supportive of Sentai Film, every time that Crunchyroll for X Y reason, they do not bring a series dub. Saint Thai Film is the one to bring those unique anime movie series to the dubbing and to the tier. Good example. One of the example, Bell, which is a movie that was released last year. It was brought to you by Saint Thai Film, and I'm trying to remember now. Meeting Abyss, the movie dub, and when we had the Down of the Abyss, very important movie. Same time film. Um, I try to remember all the movies now because there are so many. What is same time film at the end? Um, and that I I don't know if I have like any technical or professional or legal terms for it. Um, but Sentai is it's essentially the um, from my experience in it, it. We are like the company that. Well, hmm, I may be completely wrong, but they 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 have the talent, they have the directors, they have the produ producers and the engineers and the actors. They they bring in the con like I as an actor and a contractor for Sentai. Um, and so they bring in the talent and the recordings and the editings and they do all of I, I think they are part of the licensing. Um, and then we work with High Dive um to do streaming of certain of certain anime um we've also done things that end up on netflix on things that end up on hulu on things that end up on tsunami um so sentai itself is like the recording licensing company mm, don't quote me on that but from my understanding that is like where that exists and then our connection to high dive is that that is the streaming platform that we funnel a lot of our stuff with um yeah and, and it's interesting to... yeah no go ahead, go ahead please because i think i think for crunchyroll like crunchyroll does the dubbing and then crunchyroll does the streaming um we're almost like a second step from that sentai does the dubbing and then sentai will sometimes stream through netflix but also sometimes we stream through um high dive and I'm trying to get the movie, the latest one, and it's failing me right now because I know they bring important movies that usually cross your What happened in the movie? Will not bring, no, I mean, many of the movies that same time film bring to us mm -hmm. top are movies that crunch you often don't see in, uh, in platform like Crunchyroll or mm -hmm. Netflix. Just because, and most of the time, because they're, they are unique one. For example, one of my favorite one, one of the latest one, Summer Ghost. Summer Ghost have a very special place in my heart. Very different anime for the today's day pencil technique. Short mm -hmm. story of their 20 short 30 minutes, very short, and they brought it up to, to America. It, that was hint and film work. Um, go, uh, goodbye, Mr. Something, trying to remember, it's going to be somewhere here soon. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of everything that you see at art anime movie, not at the Studio Ghibli level. Most most of the time, the people behind it bringing it international is in English is same time film, which that's why I keep saying mm. that have a very special place in my heart um, because they're, they're dedicated work to bringing those unique movie. The Studio Ghibli is a different level. We're talking about a very big league, internationally big league. So mm -hmm. that's the yeah. deception to the rule. And since However, I actually, we did dub, um, uh, what is it, Grave of Fireflies or, or something? I don't remember that one. We did do that one. Um, no, I think that's actually on point. I They have such a, a unique, um, like, like, source that we pull from. We do the weird stuff. We do the artsy stuff. It's not always the, the commercial anime. Sometimes it's going to be weird. Um, like, I got to do Girls Last Tour, which is... Um, it's kind of a, it's like an anime that a lot of people don't know about, but when they do know about it, they're like, ah, oh, that's such a, I love that one. Um, just a little shout out to kind of an obscure anime if you've never heard of it. 
I also saw here that you guys, well, I mean, Sentai did the Garden of Words, which is also on Netflix. That's a pretty good, that's a pretty good movie. Okay. I, I don't know if Onyx seen it, but I, I believe Kiara saw it, right? Yeah. And th this is why I keep saying Sentai, many people doesn't realize how impact, how much impact they make to the community. Those series, Haikyuu, the volleyball one, is brought by Sentai Film. Um, Girls Pan Panzer, the one in the war tank. Girls Panzer. Mm -hmm. So they're, they're getting to the market and uh, there's a lot going on in the market, honestly. Many people, when we had the big fusion between Crunchyroll and Funimation, many people thought that was the end of the anime industry. Now it's a monopoly and it's gone. It really did not happen that closely. People didn't realize, but when this happened, other side company saw the moment to rise up and start pushing forward. High Dive is one of those companies that I keep saying is still under the radar for many people because they don't have it here enough from it. However, they don't realize how much production they're doing. But again, because, um, and now more, more than ever, when Crunchyroll is doing the anime awards, For the first time, the past three years, they're bringing products that are not Crunchyroll pure. And we see them not competing like this year. For the first, I think for the first time, we have an anime award of the year and non Crunchyroll production. Cyberpunk 2077, nobody saw it coming. It's, not, it's a Netflix production. But for the first time, seeing an ex external getting to the big league, for me, that's a big deal. And High Dive also, we've seen it in many conventions. And by the way, I don't get paid by anybody here. I'm just saying what I'm experienced. Don't, 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 don't chase me down here. However, um, going back to one of the last characters that you, you I mean, not last, we have many characters, but we're going to speak today. My teen romantic comedy, Snafu. One day, another series by Sentai Film, which many people didn't realize where it really came from. But then, I don't know how it really get to other platforms, but people recognize it, know it, and you have one of the main characters, which she has also a special place in my heart. I sometimes feel like it wasn't fair that what the story happened to her. How was the spirit doing? Um, I forget her name. Ah. Yui. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, Yui, Yui Gahama. Um, So that, like, I mean, it, it has a, it's a near and dear anime. It, it also near and dear to my heart, the character, the show itself, um, very unique in that it's like, it's doing the thing. It's doing, it's a high school show. Everyone's in their uniforms. It's a club. There's, it's a, it's a high school anime where everyone's in a club and drama happens. Um, but Uh, that, that show came up, it was my first, like, major character. It was my first main character, um, where I had multiple seasons. Um, and so that was fun and scary and exciting for Baby Cat. Um, and then, it, I, I really wasn't expecting, like, it, it was... It's one of those niche anime that all, the people who love it have been fans of it for 13 coming on to 15 years now because it was an it was originally um, produced and released several years ago. And I think it was when the third season came out, we had been waiting for the third season for 13 years. Um, yep. I uh, I recorded the first and second season um, back in 20 18 maybe so it had been a while yeah it was dubbed a while after the original release um but then the third season everyone had been waiting for the third season for at least a decade um and so it was one of those like cult following kind of niche anime that a lot of people really loved and a lot of people were very excited to get a dub and then incredibly excited to get um the third season um and it's just it's so special like the first season is one thing it is a it's a romantic comedy the animation is cute the second season is suddenly like different it starts to get dramatic it starts to get a little bit more emotional and complex 
as well as the um, illustration and animation changes and evolves with the characters. And then the third season, it happens again. Um, and it's just, I'd never experienced that in an anime before to, to see it go from having been done 10 years ago versus now, like seeing the difference in the way it was produced um, and the way it was written. It was, it was really special to like, evolve with the anime as an actor and as a as a watcher um and then the character itself is just it, she's yui she's the best girl um <laughs> she she doesn't get what she deserves but um i was happy with it. i was like you know what it, it is the way it needs to be these people are where they need to be um so i wasn't too bitter but uh <laughs> um no that that's a really a really lovely anime i love that one so much I'm one of those guys who waited for the English dub, so I only watch an English dub, and I can tell you, it was so satisfying to see the story going on because I'm the person who can start watching it, and there's no more sub, there's, a, there's no more dub, there's a good chance I might drop it over there, unless a miracle happened, and those mir that miracle happened with this story, which for those who are fans of the Slice of Life, yes, novella, mm -hmm. dramatic, that's me. You're yeah. going to enjoy it because it's a roller coaster, roller coaster of emotions. Um, I, I will say a little bit similar to damn it, I forgot the name. Uh, Taiga from the the series that is Toro Doro. Thank you. A little bit similar the roller coaster to Toro Doro, but mm -hmm. I feel like this one the drama got a little bit bigger. So mm -hmm. definitely and acting as a Jewy. <laughs> Tell me about it because you ha Toradora. she's very happy. No, uh, you. I said yeah, Toradora. It's Toradora. 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 She's very happy, but at the same time, at the end, the conclusion, she's like carrying the tears in the smile. How do you deal with that scene where technically you're smiling and crying at the same time and you have like in seconds smile back and cry again and collapse? I'm like, that's too much emotion for me. Um, that, that was an interesting one. Um, I, I first recorded, like, the first two seasons are very happy, traditional Yui. So, uh, season two, you see a little bit of a change. She starts to get a little bit more courage. Um, she's a little bit more multidimensional. Um, so I got a taste of that. I kind of, like, knew, okay, Yui's a little serious now. Um, but then season three, it, it it's like, She's so sad the whole season. <laughs> She's very moody, like all the whole time. Um, and that was really cool, but it was a challenge because it, it wasn't like where Yui lived for me. It was almost like I had to kind of reanalyze the character physically and emotionally um, because she just, she was very different. She felt like a different character to me. Um, season one and two Yui versus season three Yui was like, it was honestly a little bit of a struggle and it was also COVID. It was a COVID recording for me. Um, and uh, I I was recording the first, I think the first half of the season I was in remote recording. Um, I wasn't in the studio. I was in a little recording tent that I made in a living room. I was off in Virginia recording. So it was a very weird experience on top of it being a weird Yui. I was like, things are weird. Yui's not acting normal. I'm in a tent that I made out of quilts. Like, what is going on? <laughs> um, so like, to, to, to set aside some of the professional aspect of it, I was kind of going through something. <laughs> um, then like everyone else in the whole world was. And so, um, it did, like I was going through, a change and a, and a challenge in that moment. Um, but to get to the end, Yui, especially by the end of season three, when there is that resolution of what's going on, um, the emotions did come. Like it was like, no, this makes sense. <laughs> of course she's gonna cry and of course she's gonna smile and pretend it's okay because that's what everyone's doing right now. Um, so that kind of like, it sucked, but it made sense. <laughs> Um, and also, like, we were able to do that, like, in the recording booth, like, <laughs> I was able, I think a lot of it was like, this is her talking, but this is her voiceover, and her voiceover is sobbing. 
but her her talking to um, Tahiki is fine, but her talking to herself is sobbing. Um, so I was able to do them split. I was able to do some of the normal stuff in one, and then the sad stuff I was able to do um, another time. Some of like the tricks of the booth is is they don't always expect you to jump back and forth. Is like, yeah, no, say this line, and it makes sense, and then we'll say your sad lines. Um, as far as that goes. <laughs> but yeah, no, it it was rough. <laughs> yeah, many us well, many people celebrate the conclusion of the series, how the romance end up, and many people like me we were like, we just hug her, we so ah, she gave the battle, we saw her fighting, she went through it, and at the end, it's like when you see your favorite team losing, you're like, my mm -hmm. job team, damn it, we lose. And yep. talking about these characters, one of the I promise this is the last one. It is wrong to it is wrong to pick up girls in the dungeon. Hell no, it, it is not wrong. One of the most iconic characters, which is a essential role from for the transition what's happening between season two to season three and from from there. Vin. Did I say it right? Vine. Vine. I knew it. <laughs> Vine. Vine. Uh One of the characters that really, uh, I think for the beginning, many people, we all just thought, she's just a monster. She's just an extra character. She's going to be dead in, in minutes. And we never thought that she would be, be the key to the transition from the big drama of the story of this world when you have semi-gods or, or some of gods. Yeah, semi-gods, mm -hmm. who they are, right? Semi-gods. Yeah. The descent of the gods fighting in this labyrinth again into the another abyss or not? It's a labyrinth. It's a labyrinth where mm -hmm. people also know why those monsters, those creatures, those evil creatures are over there, and suddenly we have this monster that she can speak, she can cry, she looks human, and people start. That's like the game show. Like, wait, after with this creature, they should like they kill me, we kill you. That's life, and suddenly we have one of them that is acting as a human and she desesperated. How was the experience of stopping Vina? Um honestly like when I got that first of all I, I did the oh, I, I did the Easter egg at the end of season two. Um and I I was like okay he was like it's gonna be an Easter egg. We don't know if we're gonna get the rights to the third season. We don't know when recording is gonna happen. Um, but here's here's a character. You may or may not see this one again. <laughs> so I did the Easter egg, wasn't sure if I was if I was gonna come back, wasn't sure where this character was going. I went home and did my research and I was like, oh, no, she's coming back and it's gonna be pretty badass. Mm. Um, <laughs> but uh, we did that and then COVID happened and I got the call that was like, oh yeah, we have this next season. Um, let's start figuring out recording. Um, And I'd done the first couple of episodes in my little in my little COVID tent. Um, and then finally I came back. I finally I came back to town and I was able to go back into the studio. Um, and uh, I just felt lucky because Vine is so cool. And Vine is a little dragon girl. And and like the the plot, her plot is so cool. And um, it was really fun for me. I just really loved the what she went through i loved her story um i loved how she came in to to bell's little to bell's little harem family <laughs> um and and i just like overwhelming i felt lucky spoiler spoil it's too long it, had, it was released a year ago don't worry throw the spoiler. okay 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 um Ooh. and then i got to do the thing at the end i got to turn into a monster and rip everyone's heart out um it was great I, I can tell you, I, I, I can tell you from the whole series, I never thought Fine would be the character that would bring the tears in me like crazy. I never, I wasn't ready for that moment. I still not ready for it. I still watch it. Nope. I get goosebumps watching the scene of Vine when Dengli, she died. She died. Yeah. And... I cried in that session. It was one of those I I wasn't fully expecting. Like I knew it was going to happen. I knew it was going to go off the rocker. Um, but I that was one of the first 
sessions for me where I think I was given a character that does kind of explode and lose control. Um, and I, I was exhilarated. I was like, wow, this is really fun. I love getting in the booth and kind of letting go. Um, and, and like taking care of myself. Like I, I, I feel like technically I'm, I'm doing what I can to take care of my voice and making sure I'm, I don't just blow it out, but how can I, like, what is the challenge? How can I sound really heartbreaking and, and guttural and intense and like convey pain um, without tearing out my voice so I can continue to do this? Um, but yeah, it was, that was one of the ones that like, it took me to a place where like, emotionally, it, it really did. I went on the roller coaster. <laughs> And uh, in my case, um, at that point of the series, it was getting a, a Game of Thrones point where you don't know, like, hey, this guy, are, at this point, nobody's safe. They're going to wipe out anybody. And, and we were like, whoever is dead now is not going back, for real. And uh, there was this point that we all we are all in love with most of the characters, even the good ones and the bad ones. And when this moment happened, for me, it was devastating. I'm like, Crap, mm -hmm. it freaking happened from all and ah, they're cutting the budget, they're killing her again now. And from nowhere, that he's like alchemist or a magician, or he's he, he very a character with very interesting background. How he and mm -hmm. that work as it's like Voldemort, but good person, then he sacrificed <laughs> his humanity for what he's seeking, and mm -hmm. that is spell that. Pray those words it kill me when I hear in like oh I claim today the death should not I'm like ah, please, 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 please 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 bring it ring a ring and then and the end I'm like this guy are capable that they already made me cry after those beautiful words they're capable to say oh it didn't work oh well here here is a show we can start digging the hole I was ready for that at that moment for anything like that yep exactly no I yep I you know. I'd never, I don't think I'd really ever had a character that died. And so to do that was really exciting too. Like, I know it's backwards, but I'm like, yes, I was so excited. <laughs> um, but it was really fun. It was really cool. Please keep her safe because even that right now we are in season six, five, nobody's safe. <laughs> and I don't want to see her dying because oh, it, it can happen <laughs> at this point in the series. So Thank you so much for joining us tonight. It has been wonderful, exciting talking with you. It has been a real roller coaster for emotion from all your characters, from the darkest <laughs> to the happiest to the saddest one to the Christ. Beautiful. For those who haven't followed you yet, where they can, which social media can they follow you? Yes. Um, I am most active right now. I'm on Instagram, Cat Smudge, C S Lula. C A T S U. Do that again. C A T S M U D G E, um, like like a little smudge on a com computer or whatever. Cat smudge is my Instagram handle, um, and then I want to say Cat Thomas is Twitter. Um, you should be able to find me on, on Twitter. I'm pr I think I'm pretty easy to find. Um, but yeah, Instagram is my biggest one. Cat Thomas is is a good one for uh, Twitter for anime as well. And if you can find her, don't worry, just go to the description below and you're going to find the link to her web, to their social media, to her Twitter account, mm -hmm. Instagram. So just one click over there and follow her. And for us, like always, subscribe, like, and share in all our social web page, YouTube, very important, subscribe, please, subscribe, please, and like, uh, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, TikTok for anime, anime scenes in English and any social media guys so thanks every thanks to you everybody i will see you in the next episode sayonara bye bye bye, bye.